facing that way, and it's called a mount. All right? About face. Front towards me. All right, we're ready to get started. One more thing before we get started. Soldiers, when they march, they sing songs. Oh, you know that song? Oh, you yeah. did. Now we're going to sing cadences. And I wrote some cadences about the Civil War. So that's what we're going to Soldiers' life is hard indeed. Soldiers' life is hard indeed. I had a senior citizen group here last week, and they were a lot louder than you guys. Now, let's try it again. We drill all day at night with praise. We drill all day and night we free. We eat hard tack and bacon fat. We eat hard tack and bacon fat. It's hard for a soldier to live on that. It's hard for a soldier to live on that. Then I'll say sound off. You'll go one, two. You know that. We didn't have to do that. Okay. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Break it on down. One, two. Four. Left. What ends up happening is you guys go one way, I go another way, and the are like, yeah. One, two, three, four. or so of the Civil War. General Grant, he's a commander of which side? The North. The, the Union. And General Lee. It went 40 miles north from where we're at, five miles south of where we're at. Now, General Grant's favorite tactic, they had to go to the south. So North Carolina troops. <laughs> What you got in that flask, soldier? Water. Okay, just checking. Second, when the 14,000 Union soldiers came over this wall, Robert E. Lee was a mile up that way at his headquarters. It's real early in the morning. He walks out, he hears the ruckus. He walks out on the porch of the house and looks to the south and he sees Confederate soldiers running to the west. He knows immediately that the Union had broken his line around Petersburg. He grabs a piece of paper, he writes a note to the Confederate president. Who was that? Jefferson. Mr. Davis. I'm Davis. Jefferson Davis. He writes a letter, Mr. President, I can't leave this last time. my line is broken. I must leave Richmond and Petersburg today. Signed, Robert E. Lee. That's it. He doesn't say I might have to leave it. I, yeah. I maybe next week. Inside Jefferson Davis's office, he goes behind his desk. He sits in his chair, and you know what he says? I want a cool drink of water. They bring him a glass of water. He drinks it down, sets the glass back on the desk gets up and goes back to the river. Gets in his boat and goes back to City Point. That's enough. Stop it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Reduce to the minimum private soldiers and system one. Like, so you gotta look like that. Okay? So do your best to try to protect. Okay, here's another. There you go. Now, our shopper, which hat would you prefer? <laughs> okay, here you go. This is a slouch hat. It's a civilian hat. It's sort of neat because it'll keep the sun out of your eyes, the rain from going down your collar. So there we go. Now, this other hat. No, it's not a purse. Dang it. This is called a forage cap. All right. Who knows what forage means? Run around. What's it made out of? 
Well, do you know the Army still issues wool blankets just like that? Only they're normally green. I think they bought them all during the Civil War. They're just still giving them out. All right, what's our next item? Um, one rubber blanket. We have a rubber blanket up here as a tablecloth. And it's, and what would you use that for? Rain. Keep dry as a tent. What else? What if you're not camped? You're marching. What could you do? Poncho. A jacket or a poncho. Yes. Very good. And then our next item. Tavern sack or man purse. <laughs> what are you going to carry in your man purse? Something. <laughs> no. Normally you're not going to carry bullets. Hard tack. Well, water wouldn't work very good in this because it's Hard the bag. Clothes, items like medical stuff. Medical stuff? You're cheap. Toothbrush. Toothbrush, very good. What about a hair comb? Yeah, that would A mug, a tin cup. Because you're going to cook out of it, you're going to make coffee, and you're going to dig holes like that big moat out there using your bayonet and your tin cup. And then you're going to cook your dinner, right? Could you imagine marching 10, 15 miles carrying that? You guys out there on the battlefield making a charge, sounded like you all did a pretty good job in that fight. But you've got to realize, if you're a soldier back during the Civil War, or even today, are you spending every single minute of every single day on the battlefield? No. No. In fact, one Civil War soldier said, for all the days and weeks and months of sheer boredom spent in a camp like this, there were only minutes of sheer terror. Expected to do things like pull picket duty, kind of acting as a guard, pulling fatigue duty, like chopping wood or digging trenches, or you might have a little bit of free time. Now the soldiers who were here were here for six whole months during the winter. Feel a little humiliated? Yeah. I want everybody to point and laugh at Private Will. <laughs> 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 How do you feel there, Private Will? Are you feeling humiliated yet? Okay, what do you think? What? You're pretty uncomfortable, get pretty miserable. Get it off! 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 What? Get it off! Spider! Oh, oh, he's not going to be you with that hook. A little lower. Behind your neck. That's nothing. Come on. Good. So right now, don't now do you back. think you he's going to gamble anymore? Yeah. Yeah. This punishment might fit the crime. So we're going to let our Private off the hook here. He's done it. We're going to do both humiliation and some corporal punishment. Private, since you're such a brave and trustworthy soldier, we're going to transfer you from the infantry. You're not going to be a foot soldier anymore. We're going to put you in the cavalry. You're going to need a sword, so I want you to hold this sword high up above your head. <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny looking, right? Yeah. Point and laugh at her again. <laughs> Okay, she's feeling a little bit humiliated, but get this, guys. Not only is she going to be sitting there like that as long as I say she has to, but that's not really what the horse is going to look like. The horse is going to be way up high like that. So if she gets uncomfortable and she tries to get down, we're going to have somebody here with a bayonet to make sure that she stays up there. She's going to be under guard all day. She looks ridiculous. She doesn't have the option of getting now, we're not going to hurt her today. I'm just letting her hold those ropes. But really, what I would do is I would take these ropes and I would tie them around her thumbs real good and tight. Now, Private, stand on your tiptoes. Okay? Put your arms as far up above your head as you can get them. And once she's fully extended there, she's on her tiptoes. Her thumbs are tied to those ropes. I'm going to tie this off. And I'm going to leave her standing there. What's going to happen if she takes the pressure off of her toes by going down on her heels? It's going to pull her thumbs off. So, or at least break them, pull them out of socket. You think this might keep you from straggling, Brad? What do you guys think? Is this punishment fit the crime? No. Yeah, I think so too.